Well, worship. What is worship? What does it mean to, to worship? How do we, how do we uh, qualify that? And the first, uh, first I want to start off with saying, what is God-centered worship? Um, a lot of people say worship is what we just did, right? It's singing and all that. But is it just that? Or is it everything that we do? Is it all things that we do on a Sunday morning? Is worship more than Sunday? I would say, well, probably the answer is, is yes to all those questions. Because worship is a big part of what we do as Christians. We spend a lot of time preparing each week for it. We give a lot of thought into what, we, what, what it should be. And, uh, but often, we don't necessarily agree with what it should look like, right? Uh, the four congregations in our church all worship very differently. You go downstairs right now, and the, the, during our same time, our, our worship is the children's worship. And what they do down there, if you ask Patrick, is very different than what we do up here. Um, there's a little bit more movement. There's a little bit different kinds of songs that they sing. There's a, um, I know when we first got here, our Del and I, before we were here up here every Sunday, we went down there and, and participated in, in worship with Patrick. And, and it, was, uh, it, was, it was very different. And you go to the Cantonese congregation, it's going to be very different, right? A little more formal, a little more traditional in a little sense. If you go to the Mandarin congregation, it's going to be, again, a little bit different than what we do here on a Sunday morning. Um, worship, is, it varies. If you went out to SYC, the summer youth celebration this last two weeks, um, you would find it was, it was very different than what we do here as well. Um, you have to ask yourself, the question is, is one more correct than the other? Is one more spiritual than the other? Uh, is certain content, content more important than other content? Or is, just, is it just more important that I feel fulfilled or entertained by the worship team or the pastor? Well, let's start off right off by answering those questions very simply, right? The answer is no. That's not what worship is about. And there is no, I would say, we have to be careful to say that there is no right and there is no necessarily really wrong types or styles of worship. <laughs> in fact, if you go into another Chinese church, I'll bet you that there's a, there's a difference in that worship as well. If you go into an Anglo-speaking church or you know, an English-speaking church, you'll find that it's different. If you go to a Catholic church or a Baptist church or an Anglican church or a Lutheran church or any other denomination, you'll find that the worship is different. Is it wrong? No, not necessarily. There might be aspects that I might question this, but in parts of those things. But, but I would say there, each style of worship is not necessarily wrong. The key to all these worship styles of worship is, is it God-centered or not? If we had a, three individuals up here, we would see three different, we would see three different styles of worship too. In our congregation, we see three different styles of worship. So if we were sitting here, we had three people. Imagine me being three people. I know I'm not, I'm not that big, but I'm three different individuals, right? But uh, if, you, you know, if you're watching worship over here, and if you've, been, if you've been on the worship team, you've seen it, one person might worship by, by raising their hands, or they might you know, be very, into, the, very uh, into that occasionally. You might see that once in a while, even in our congregation. People will clap, right, in worship. Um, They'll do different things like that. Another person might be one that just sort of stands there and, uh, you know, they sing and they, are, they, they enjoy the music, they enjoy the prayer time, they enjoy the message. They, they, they verbalize their worship in, in, in song and um, in prayer. And, uh, you, you know, they're, but they may not do a lot of movement. So, you know, you got the one again that's very, you know, very, very praising God and then like that. And there's another one that's praising God like this. But there's another one that is in our congregation as well. And they're over here, and they're like this. But it's one. Which one is right, and which one is wrong? Now the person that's over here, that's a little bit silent, may not even sing. Will look at those other ones and go, "What is wrong?" Right? Especially the one that's really silent. Will look over at the one that's doing this, or like this, you know, or. Or like, you know, whatever, however you might look at it, they're going to look at that person and they're going to go, that guy has lost everything. That, you know, maybe he had a frontal walk. I don't know. He's just crazy, right? Then the, the one in the middle is looking at the one that 
on the side, on either side of him, and, and sees the one that's very silent. And goes, why can't that guy just get into it? And he looks at the other guy and goes, I don't know about him, but you know, it, it's very different, right? And the guy that's really, you know, that's raises his hand, that's willing to clap, that's willing, that's just, you know, almost willing to dance. He looks at the other ones and goes, what is? Why can't they just get into it? Don't they love God enough? You know, it's all. We have all these different responses. And different forms of worship, are they any of them wrong? Well, it depends. It depends on their motivation. It depends on what their worship is about. If their worship is about who I am and what I'm my fulfillment and, and all about me, then there's a problem. If their worship is about, about what everybody else is you know that I, I've seen a person, or I'm here for a second, for, with me. I've, I've been to that, I've, I've sat in worship, but I'm kind of, I'm the guy in the middle, more or less, right? I don't typically do that, but I've seen people that are in worship and they're, they're standing beside each other and they're doing this. It's like, it's like, look at me, look at me. And it gets a little bit, but you know, it, it, it can be a little bit distracting, right? So, you know, it's, it's harder, but, but then there's the other person, you know, that is always, you know, that's there all. They're so distracted because they're talking to the person. Or, heaven forbid. <laughs> you're missing the iPad. You know, they're not listening. They're listening. They're, they got, they're, they're, they're on here. And there's distractions. I find that worship can mean lots of different things. You know, when I was out to, up on the mountain with Alexander, when we climbed out for what a time of worship. And it was it was like this. You just hear nothing. Occasionally you heard a bird. But what an experience of worship that was. That's worship. It's a little different than what we are used to, it's a little different than, than what we expect, but it's 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 a really a part of who we are. And it's 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 what worship can be. Worship can be many different things. When, our, when we go camping in a couple weeks, I know at times we're going to have a good time to worship because when you look around at the surroundings that you're in and the beauty of God's creation, that's worship. You can be in a, in a church building and look at the beauty of the architecture. Now, you know, we don't necessarily have the most exciting stained glass windows, but they're, when the light comes through and shines through, you, it's just, it, there's such an amazing beauty about it and it's, it's, it's worship. Or even the architecture of the Gothic uh, churches across the nation, across uh, Europe, rather, and you, and you go into those, and you just have this like naturally to worship, natural to worship. Worship is defined in the dictionary as acting an act of paying homage, reverence, or adoration. So that's what worship is: an act of homage, reverence, or adoration. So it's, it's giving to, uh, to a certain thing or an act or an individual. Some kind of pay, pay homage, so you give, you're giving to them to who you are. You're paying reverence. You, you show respect to them, adoration. You, you lift them up. You praise them. That's what our worship is about. So as we look at the definition, it should it should be noted that there's no reference to how I feel or how much it entertains me. It's all about the person we worship and for us. Who is that? Well, Joyce said that eloquently this morning. As we sang through those songs, it's about it's about God. And in, in Deuteronomy chapter four, verse five and six, we read we read to, in, um, what it's about. It says, "Listen, Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. With all your heart." With all your soul and with all your strength. So it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about God. And whether that's outside in nature, whether it's in the pew, whether it's going for a walk with your with your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend to the river valley, killing the mosquitoes, whatever you have to do nowadays, going for a walk in the river valley. Whatever it is that you're doing, if it's a focus on God, that's worship. Now, I used to be a very, very traditional thinking type person. And, oh, this, this is where worship happens, right? And, you know, I, I always get frustrated when someone says, well, I'm going out to, to the mountains to worship. Now, I want you to understand, I do believe that there's all places that we can worship. But I do believe there's, there's something special about when we come together as a church to worship. 
and God centered, that is their intention, their worship is all about who He is and it our, turns our focus to Him. Often, though, when we go looking for a church, what do we look for? We look for a church that has a great worship band, the preacher is excellent. We look for, for some, someone that is inspiring, something that, that uh, makes us feel good, that is fulfilling, and all these kinds of things. And that's where we get our focus off of what is really important. We need to find a place where we're comfortable and we see that God is where people will return to. It doesn't always happen necessarily. And in, in some of the biggest churches it doesn't always happen. In some of the small churches it doesn't always happen. In the medium-sized churches it doesn't always happen. In the message, the version of the uh, translation called the message, this is how it says, Love the Lord your God with your whole heart. Love Him with all that is in you. Love Him with all that you've got. I love that translation. So love Him with, with your whole heart. Last week in Sunday school, our, in our youth Sunday school class, we talked about our whole heart. What does it mean to love the Lord God with all your heart? Well, when I thought about it, I thought about my wife and my children and things like that. When, I, when we talk about our heart, when we give someone our heart, when I, was, we got, when I met my wife 29 years ago, roughly, 20, maybe almost 30 years ago, I guess, getting close to that, eh? More than half my life ago. I'm only 46, so, so now it's, it's gone over that side. But uh, when I met her, I know, my heart stirred, so to speak, right? You know what I mean? Anybody who's, who's seen some guy or girl that, is, that just catches their eye, you know, we say our, our hearts, you know, we've heard people say our hearts skip a beat, things like that. Um, I, won't, I won't point to any one of our youth out necessarily, but there was a young, one of our young ladies on junior high week saw a young man and that, that got her, her attention. And I won't say who it was, because I won't embarrass her. She'll probably do it herself. <laughs> but but you know <laughs> she it was it, you know when we say when our heart is touched it's our emotion right it's how we feel you know when I was at uh, SYC it, I my my thing is I sit at the back during worship because I I don't want it to be about me I don't want it to you know I don't want to get in the way of what God's doing. I want my the youth, the youth I, I usually just tell them, go sit where you want, sit with your friends if you like, and just, you know, just pay attention, that's all. I never expected that week to have my heart touched. And you don't, you don't see me doing this very often, or I don't think ever, I don't think any of you see me do the whole raising of hands, things like that, but God, for some reason, touched my heart. And I had my hands raised and tears flowing down my face. It was my emotion. When he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, I believe what he's saying, there's time, it's good to be emotionally connected, given your whole, who you are, how you know how I love my wife, that's how I'm to be emotionally connected to God as well, that I, I want to be around her, I want to be with her all the time, I want to be a part of what her, her life is, I, when she cries, I, I want to cry with her, when she's happy, I want to be happy with her, when she's excited about something new, I want to be excited with her. It's not about who, what, you know, it's not about me, it's about what she, what's going on in her life. That's what I want. When I give her my heart, that's what it's about. When we give God our heart, that's what it's about. It's like we're, we're connected, we're, we're desired to be with Him. We want to go with Him. We want to, want to feel how He feels. We want to see things how He sees them. That's what worship is. Adoration. And then it goes on in the section of scripture, and it's a short passage of scripture, and he says, with all your soul. And in, in the message it goes, it says there, it says, love him with all that's in you. How do you love someone with all that's in you? How do you worship someone with all that's in you? It's by being totally sold out. It's when you say, I, this, my, this relationship is all about who I'm at. And, you know, I'm not going to worry about what what so-and-so is doing next to me, I'm not going to worry that, that if they're clapping, if I don't feel a sense of clapping, but if I'm giving everything, I'm putting all myself into worship, maybe for you, it's not singing loudly. I remember, but you don't know, uh, some of you remember Thai when he was here. He's a, a military officer, and he's gone off to Cold Lake, and he's been, and he's been, hopefully maybe one day he'll come back to Edmonton. 
But Fame is not a singer. And that's not his part of worship. But when he's here, he gives his all. He's, he's all engaged. He's, he's about the word. He wants to hear the word of God. He wants to, to be about prayer. He wants to be engaged in worship. He's giving his all. He's not distracted by the things of this world. He's not distracted by his phone or his iPod or his iPad or any, whatever else he might be carrying. He was totally in. And you and I, you know, I, there's even myself, there's times I get distracted. And, I, and we need to realize when he says, love him with all your heart, it means that we're, we're totally focused on him. We're not worried about how the, how the worship team is performing. We're not worried about how well they play the guitar or how well they play the piano or drums. It's about giving our whole heart to him and, and, and saying, Lord, I want to be connected to you. And then it's giving our whole self to him. It's being totally sold into that relationship. When I, when I said to my wife on that on, on August the 15th, right? 17th. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our son is born on the 15th. I always make sense to date. But on the 17th of August, 1984, we stood in front of my, uh, my dad as our pastor. And I said, I do, my wife. That means I was giving everything. When I gave my life to Christ in, in June of 1973, I said to I said to, to God, I'm giving my all to you. In, in nineteen roughly nineteen oh I must nineteen seventy eight ish, nineteen seventy nine, during a revival service, um, the preacher asked me if anyone was willing to felt called to ministry. I said to God, I don't know what it is you call me. Well, fourteen years old, I said, I'm living is my whole life. So love the Lord with love with all your heart. So you're emotionally connected. You, you want to be here. You want to be engaged with Him. You want to experience Him. You want to you want to you want to know who He is. And then you go on and you say, I'm I'm giving you all of who I am. There's no other distractions. I'm not worried about what uh, Ryan's doing or Adele's doing. I'm not worried about well, Calvin or or you know or Chris or whoever. I'm not worried about what they're doing. My wife, when I said that to her, like I said, I, you know, now it's, it's her only. There is no other women for me. There is no other girls that I'm interested in. There's no, no one that's gonna, that, that is more important to, to me than her. That's what it is with God saying, when you love me, you want to worship me. There's no other things. No other connections. And then he goes on, finally, in that verse, he says, in the Holy Christian standards, with all your strength, again, I want to take, draw your attention back to the message. He says, love him with all you've got. So Lord, this is mine, this is yours. Lord, here's my children. They're yours. Lord, here's my life. It's all yours. It's not holy. Back to that definition, it says homage, reverence, and admiration. Well, paying homage is Satan. I'm here for you. When you came before a king and you said, when you paid homage to a king in, in, the, in, the, in history, in the past, it was saying that I'm here for your soul. However, you want to use me, however, you want to direct me, where you want me to go, that's God-centered worship is the total strength of yourself. It's a total focus on Him. It's giving Him our heart. It's giving Him our lives. It's giving Him our everything. So the focus must remain upon God. It's putting our whole attention, however we express it, upon God. We're not worried about others. We're not doing we're of what others are doing, <coughs> but we know we must give them our hearts, our minds, and our strength. In John chapter 4, verse 23 24, 
Jesus says this in the Samaritan woman. He says, but the hour is coming and is now here. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You and I, the time is coming. God wants you to totally be engaged with Him. God desires you to come. In, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens that door, I'll come into him. I'll come into the soul. Either. How often is it that you come into this building and you're more focused on what is your point of view than what God has done? How often when we come into this building where, and we, we, we look around us and we look and we see someone that maybe raises their hand or someone that is singing or someone that is silent and we, and we look at them and we look down upon them and we, we get so focused on what's around us that we forget why we're focused on God. He's looking for those who are willing to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Will you surrender yourself to Him? Will you give your whole self to Him? Will you begin to look at worship in a different way. And when you, as you look around you, the world around you, and you see great creation, and one of the wonderful things about the last one, when we were at out of camp, we were walking around, and we were walking through the big field of, uh, where they have soccer field and football fields, and in the middle of the field, I come upon this, this little tiny flower. I don't know what kind of flower it is, but it was one of the most pretty flowers I've ever seen. In a field that guys are, are tackling each other in, and uh, playing soccer and, and uh, just having a grand old time. And in the middle of this field is God's creation of a beautiful, beautiful purple flower. It was wonderful. It was amazing. And it reminded me, even in all the chaos around us, we can find the beauty of God and worship. I even took pictures. It's on my little Instagram page and stuff like that. And it was just, a, you know, it just amazed me what I saw. So as we begin to think about worship,